the Central Bank of Kenya has pressed commercial banks in the country to help stem the currency slide. But will this work? Well, Julian Amboko is a research analyst at Stratlink Africa who joins Boni Tunya to discuss this and more. Julian, let's, let's start with where we are in respect to the regional currencies. How do we stand? On a regional standpoint, Ken, the Kenyan shilling is actually doing uh, particularly well if you compare it to the peers like uh, the Tanzanian shilling, the right. Ugandan shilling. Um, on the broader scope, if you look at the South African rand, mm. the Nigerian naira, and that's basically because, uh, and Stratling has always insisted on this, we have uh, comparatively more robust macroeconomic fundamentals. If you look at Ghana, it's been in, in economic uh, challenges for a while now. Same to South Africa. Uh, Tanzania, the current account deficit has always been a long-running issue. Right. So those are the things which are driving these trends. Interesting. Yeah. Because most of the time we're talking about 105, 106, we, we fail to look at it in context and yes. we think the ceiling is falling. Absolutely. But this week we were subjected to a new four and a half year low of 105. We touched 106 and everyone is wondering, could we be headed to 110 or even 107? Um, this prompted the central bank to call for a meeting yes. uh, with the uh, uh, commercial bank's executives. Help us understand the role of the regulator in all this and why um, he has to consult with players in the space. If you look at it, uh, the central bank's role is to ensure that the monetary environment is stable. And by stable, we mean that inflation is predictable mm -hmm. and that the shilling is not too volatile right. in, in, in any market. The currency is not too volatile. And therefore, when the central bank now summons the commercial bank executives, especially in this context right. of a depreciating shilling, the whole idea is that investors, especially when the shilling is on a tailspin as it has been, could well begin to hedge and th they would be um, speculating with the currency. And therefore, to foster all that, because that drives the shilling further down, the central bank just calls uh, the market players and tells them, um, I mean, this is a situation at hand, and we would like to make the environment as stable as it can be. Right. Yes. Given that and what is happening, current account deficit has been the big concern, and everyone has been saying we cannot quite talk about stability if there's a huge trade imbalance between yes. Kenya and um, everyone else it trades with. We're now yeah. at 23%. Mm -hmm. um, how do we gap this? It's a tricky question uh, because, uh, one, on the one hand, we know that uh, a key driver of the current account uh, deterioration rather has been the import of capital goods. And right. we know for a fact that infrastructure projects have been um, really on the upgrade in the last uh, five or so years. The, others, the flip side of it is that um, we are now sent back to the drawing board, especially from a fiscal perspective. Right. And the question becomes, are we importing things we shouldn't be importing? And, and I think those are the questions now policymakers are beginning to ask themselves, even as the shilling now touches 106. Right. Because um, our exports, especially to the East African region, have been declining in the recent past. Right. And therefore, it means that um, we are losing our buffer yeah, as, uh, against the deterioration of the current account. OK. Yeah. Um, inflation figures was one of the issues that probably prompted the central bank in their last sitting to hold the rates where they were. Um, and now uh, we've seen a slowdown back to 5.8%, where uh, within a range that the, the, the bank would like to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of a factor does this play in the future decisions? Inflation is a very big factor, especially from a monetary perspective when you're determining uh, the benchmark rate, because um, it seeks to ensure it is stable. And therefore, given what we have seen in the last two months right. uh, for uh, August and July, inflation has been on the downtrend. And we don't foresee a lot of pressure on the central bank to hike the rate further. But still, inflation will remain a key factor, especially with the weak shilling, and considering our imports are considerably larger right. than the exports. In the wider scheme of things, uh, the Fed in America was set to uh, effect a rate hike in September. That is obviously not going to happen in the wake of all that is happening in, in China and the Asian markets. How does this affect uh, how we stand? The, the, one of the key drivers of the current depreciation has actually been the rally by the dollar because many investors have uh, been anticipating right. the, um, the rate hike by the Fed from as early as June this year. And uh, it was again said it would be in September. It's still debatable whether it will happen or not. Um, so depending on the decision they take, we could see either continuation of um, the dollar flight from Kenya and right. other frontier economies towards the United States. So we'll really wait for the September 17th to see what uh, Janet Yellen and her team put out right. to see how this goes. Um, likely scenarios, no, no rate hike. 
Um, I have read uh, a couple of the FOMC statements. Right. Um, I think there are uh, undertones that uh, the economic environment is still in the recovery phase. Right. So let, let's just wait and see. Yeah. What's the future for Sub-Saharan Africa? Because we've seen most of the currencies tumble on account of all that is happening globally and, and whatnot. And the increased exposure is as a result of either very poor manufacturing in our local economies or uh, very weak currencies and things like that. Uh, how do we best mitigate against such uh, market shakeups? I think we need to gravitate from the paradigm of the um, much touted Africa rising to an economic rebalancing because uh, part of the reason why the sub-Saharan African currencies have been really under pressure in the recent past is because the commodity boom that was there in 2010, 2011, 2012 has now waned and uh, of course now our um, export earnings are considerably subdued. Right. So now the question becomes how do we cushion against this kind of shocks? For example, like an economy like Nigeria, which uh, relies to a great extent on oil, same to Angola, if you look at um, economies like South Africa. So there is the need for that economic rebalancing from a policy perspective to ensure that we are not just commodities reliant, we need to diversify considerably as economies.